Welcome to everybody to Whale Talks Wrestling episode 89. We're here to talk a little bit of AEW Rampage Grand Slam, uh, Dynamite Grand Slam, uh, the debut episode of NFC 2.0. I thought I'd get it out there. And Extreme Regular Rules, Extreme Rules, quotation marks, Extreme Rules. But let's get right into it. We'll start it off with the easy one. We'll do NXT 2.0 debut. Samoa Joe has vacated the NXT title right after he won it. This seems to be uh, the worst thing. And um, there's rumors that he's injured. There's rumors that he's not. So we're getting a new championship tonight. Like I said, I thought it was very, how they say, suspicious how this man wins the title, shows up once, and magically has to give it up. Like, if he was injured after his match with Cross, he wouldn't have shown up the other, I don't know, just very suspicious stuff. Uh, uh, like I said, NXT was fine the way it was. Uh, I wish that NXT could just could have gone back on the network, be an hour again. It was some of the best wrestling ever. Uh, promos by all four men going for it. The, the whole new look is bright. It's colorful. I love the arena. It's better than the CWC or whatever they were using. The arena is nice. I don't enjoy how bright it is. It reminds me of Florida Championship Wrestling again, uh, FCW. But I do like the look. I do like the look. I like the colors. Like, the colors are cool and stuff. I just hate, like, you know, we went from, like, all the poppy stuff and everything was really dope. But we start off with LA Knight versus Braun Breaker, a.k.a. Rick Steiner's son, who sounds exactly like his uh, uncle would be, fucking Scott Steiner. Uh, I like him a lot. He's He's legit more like Scott Steiner than he is Rick Steiner. Uh, I don't understand why not just call him Steiner. It, his gear still said Steiner. Like, that's just weird. Uh, Gorilla Press. Uh, Knight gets squashed here. I was not a fan of LA Knight getting squashed because LA Knight has been putting in some killer matches and good pro. He's been doing great. Uh, he wins the Gorilla Press Slam, uh, Power Slam combo that uh, Goldberg used to do in four minutes. Legit buried LA Knight. This was not the greatest start to a show. I understand you want to make a star in Braun Breaker, but there's better ways to do it. Uh, Imperium versus Josh, Josh Briggs and Brooke Samson. A uh, new tag team here. Not a fan of Brooke Samson's... Kind of remind me like a Shetty Lance, Cade, and Trevor Murdoch. Uh, it's alright. I like Josh Briggs, but... Oh my god. I don't want to be a dick because I am no one to judge, but this guy has, like, I don't get it. He used to have long hair. He was in shape, and now he's just kind of, like, not in shape. He cut his hair off. I don't know. Something about him, he just looks off. Imperium looks, ugh. These guys are in amazing shape. These guys are, like, cut to hell now. Uh, Imperium with their double corner drop kick spot. Fabian with a nasty top rope butterfly suplex for the win. Like I said, the other team did not look great. Josh Briggs is pretty damn good. I know I don't know too much about Brooke Sampson over here, but I don't know. Uh, we get B Fab versus Katrina Cortez. Uh, B Fab finally makes her debut. Hit row is super over. Uh, B Fab with a midair kick and a ravishing neck breaker for the win. Uh, she cuts a promo on the new member of Legato, the girl over there, Electra Lopez. Yes, and then they go at each other, and they're gonna have their match soon. Uh, I like B-Fab. She's cool. She got a lot of personality, but she needs to work in the ring. But hey, this is what NXT is now. We're back to Leve developmental, so no one can really say anything. Carmelo Hayes is now a heel, and he has his new uh, backup, uh, Trick Williams. Uh, Trick, I like Trick's promo. He kind of reminded me of like a black version of Enzo Amore. Like, I liked his promos. They were kind of all over the place, but I, I liked it. Uh, Duke Hudson then comes in, who is now a babyface, which is strange. This guy's like eight feet tall. He gets attacked by Trick and Carmelo Hayes. Then they're basically telling like Carmelo Hayes is taking no more disrespect, and he's a heel. I like Carmelo being a heel. It makes sense with his character, and I like Trick. He seems pretty cool, and Duke Hudson is pretty awesome. He's he's really good. He's gonna be big. Yeah, so this is all right. Uh, Casey and Caden versus GG Dolan and uh, is it JC Jane? Uh, I love this whole group here. I love this whole group. Mandy comes out for the DQ. They all jump Casey and Caden. Mandy is no longer a blonde. She has the long, dark hair. Now she looks great. Saray comes out, cleans house. I'm okay with this. Uh, now it turns into a six-woman tag. Uh, Gigi, JC, and Mandy versus Caden, Casey, and Saray. 
Uh, victory roll, super kick by Caden for a near fall. Uh, like I said, I really like Mandy a lot more like this. Mandy hits a V trigger for the win. Uh, and what is it, Toxic Attraction? I, I love their group is probably one of the best things in the new NXT. My man's right here, Ridge Holland, baby. I can't wait till this dude goes nuts. Versus Drake Maverick, nasty backbreaker into a Tazplex. Like, just the way he did it looked amazing. Like, this guy is fucking great. A pair of nasty headbutts. Northern Lights driver for the win. This guy's money. Like, I've been saying Ridge Holland is nothing but money since I saw his debut in NXT UK. Uh, one of my favorite acts on NXT. Like, I, that's what I mean. I do like NXT still. I'm still going to watch it. I still enjoy it, but it's just not the same. But I do like a lot of the new people. I love these guys. The Creed Brothers versus some jobbers. Really, really, really a big fan of Diamond Mine. I love the girl, the new member. She looks awesome. Uh, the Creed Brothers are fucking just murderers. Uh, like, fucking Jesus. They kill these jobbers. Nasty Death Valley driver throw. Like he just chucks him in the corner. The guy lands on his fucking head. I love these guys. Uh, Julius with a fall away Taz Plex and then tosses him and like just gets him up and just hits his close. It's not even a close line, just a punch to the face. Done. Oh my god. It, uh, Malcolm Bivens puts over everybody. Kushida is back and he wants Roddy next week for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship, which uh, Roddy is definitely going to win. I feel like Roddy was going to win it before, but Kushida got COVID and got hit pretty hard with it, so. Uh, main event time, it is Fatal 4-Way for the NXT title. Peter Dune, Pete Dunne versus Champa versus LA Knight versus Von Wagner. Who the f fuck is this guy? It was a horrible name. He takes Kyle's place because Ridge Holland and Peter Dune attacked Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, I really thought Kyle would have been the choice here, or Pete Dunne. I really thought that. Uh, this Vaughn guy looks like a super heavyweight version of Tyler Breeze. He's not bad. He's pretty entertaining, too, in the ring, you know. Personality-wise, he has the personality of a dry race marker, but it's been one day. Uh, Pete Dunne with some nasty slaps to Vaughn Wagner. These names are horrible. Uh, big flatliners by Vaughn on everybody. Knight with his blunt force trauma on everybody. Champa hits Willow's Bell on Knight. Then uh, Champa with a plancha, a spinning plancha on everybody. That was nice. Uh, bitter end on Champa. Champa kicks out. Uh, Pete and Champa working together for a little bit. Knight with a huge superplex. He does that Kurt Angle all the way up. Bullshit. I love that shit. Fairy tale ending. Champa of all the people, you know, it, um, Von Wagner. But I did not think. I did not think Champa would be the NXT champion coming out of this. Very surprising. But again, who took the fall? L.A. Knight. We're really out here to bury L.A. Knight all day. My boy took two L's in one show. Like, would Vince go in there and be like, oh, TNA, fuck you. Uh, we get the Index Wedding now, the true main event. Uh, I love everyone is dressed like Dexter Loomis. Uh, Johnny starts putting himself over, which Candace tells him to shut up. Uh, everyone says they object to the wedding, and then Loomis does my favorite thing where he shows them an axe he's hiding in his suit. They all put their hands down. His full name is Dexter Gaylord Loomis, which I'm like, you know Vince is just dying now in NXT. His name is Gaylord. <laughs> uh, Dex chokes out the guy doing the wedding, the priest. Uh, they look for a priest, which Damian Priest was brought in as the backup priest backstage, but he was nowhere in sight. Beth Phoenix now does it. Uh, the Dexter finally talks. He says, I do, and he keeps showing the axe to everybody. Um, I thought this was a funny segment. I thought for a a debut show, this was pretty solid. I enjoyed it. I thought this was a good show, but it's all over the place because they're just introducing, even like the newer episodes, because this is a while back now. They're just introducing new people, new people, new people, which is like, damn, this is what NXT used to be. But I, I really thought NXT had a good thing going. NXT felt like a third brand, and now we're legit back to developmental. And that's going to be scary for the takeovers. Like, there has been not one takeover that I have gone walked away and go, that sucked. <sighs> but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Like I said, it wasn't a bad show. It's just disappointing to know this fucking crazy douchebag old man is taking away Triple H's baby. And Triple H having freaking heart, almost heart attack or something. 
Like this show, he wasn't even at it. I wonder why he's having all this stress. You got this old man ruining what the hell this guy worked for. He just lost Adam Cole. He's losing everybody. Half the people he pushed got fired. I just feel bad for Triple H at the end of this, honestly. I just really do.